Um, this is the abbreviated version of this glazing. This type of glazing is called Chosen Karatsu. And it's the white glaze running down like a waterfall over the brown glaze. And of all the glazing that I do, it's the most labor intensive and sort of mentally challenging. I, every time I do this glaze, I'm just exhausted that night later. And it takes a minimum of about two days because you apply the first glaze and then you, the pot's got to dry out completely before you can apply the next one. Otherwise you end up with weird uh, thickness problems. And so this glaze, this is the brown glaze and you want it to be just thick enough to run down the pot with the white glaze, but not to run onto the foot and not so thin that it uh, gets absorbed into the clay body and doesn't run at all. So it's very, very finicky. And um, normally I wouldn't glaze the bottom of these types of pots. I'd leave them open, but since I'm doing a gas firing and I can't expect really good glaze co uh, clay color, clay body color, I am actually going ahead and doing a really thin layer of glaze on the bottoms. And so what I'll do, and you saw in the earlier part, I'm putting it in water first, and that lets the body absorb water so that when I apply the glaze in this direction, the part that had the water really doesn't soak up much glaze and I can just wipe it off with my finger. And then uh, do a quick touch up on the inside of the foot with the sponge because my finger can't really reach in there. And you want to wipe with your finger and not a sponge on the outside part where people are going to see a lot of because you don't want it to look like it's sponged. You want it to look uh, a bit spontaneous. And if your finger leaves a swirl or two here, here or there, that's fine. In fact, that's better. So let me see if this is too deep. That's a little deep. I'm going to take some of this water out, actually, I think. Let's see. Just add or subtract water depending on the size of the pot and how much of the pot I want exposed to the water. And this, okay, now it's not enough. Uh, no, just a little more. All right, that probably should do it. That's about right, okay. All right, so first we're gonna soak it in water. And in this case, since I'm actually dipping in a glaze, I'm soaking it for a long time. And then I set it aside on the towel and put the next one in so I don't have to wait for each one. Set it on the towel so the water runoff goes here and not in the glaze bucket because that will cause unevenness in the application. And then I'm going to dip it. hopefully get the right thickness here. I won't know for sure until I've actually opened the kiln at the end, but I've measured it with the hydrometer and the glaze thickness is theoretically correct. This one comes out, next one goes in. I give a little swirl. I don't know if you notice, but I give a little swirl with my wrist to try and agitate the glaze just a little. Because even if with a well suspended glaze, you know the the top layer becomes water really fast. So you want to avoid that, and then you want to mix it up on occasion. This is an ash glaze, but it contains quite a bit of clay. So it's really not that bad. It stays suspended pretty well. But some of the other ash glazes that have more ash and no clay, uh, and especially large, large particle ash, um, we're talking to you, rice straw ash, um, needs to be agitated. Like between each pot that goes in, it needs to be agitated. 
it's a royal pain in the butt. You have to agitate it constantly. It still settles out. So during the glazing process, a couple times you just have to get out the drill mixer also. And actually what's gone completely to the bottom, you have to get that mixed back up again. And anyway, I'll probably do a separate video with that so you'll get to see that at some point if you're interested. I've tried using different additives and things like that, but they usually end up making the glaze stink. Or, what's or worse, even if they don't make the glaze stink, they, they mess up my sense of thickness when the glaze goes on the pot, and it ends up being actually less or more glaze than I thought it was going to be based on the viscosity, and then I'm kind of screwed. So I don't really use that anymore, or additives too much. I think I use CMC in like one glaze and that's about it. All right. Oh wait, okay, so I'm thinking about talking to you and I'm not concentrating, that's bad. Definitely not a multitasker here. So normally this glazing process, this, style, this way of glazing for this particular glaze combination is, this is how I glaze larger pieces like water jars and um, I don't know, just larger storage jars and things like that. Um, and it works really well for that. Uh, but for the smaller ones, generally, Um, you end up for the what I usually do if I'm doing wood firing I actually hold the cup like this apply the glaze with a scoop and Then I end up this part that's exposed I have to take a razor blade cut a line and then scrape it off so that that becomes exposed again um, After the fact and that takes forever <laughs> And so I'm trying to avoid that step by doing it this way But I am going to have to, um, this does add possibly an added step in the kiln and then I'm going to have to put them all on shells because they're probably all, without a doubt, they're all going to run onto the foot because I'm airing on the side of thick and because there's even a small layer of glaze on the bottom, it makes it so much easier for that glaze to run down instead of stopping where it reaches bare clay so eh. okay so here we've got these cups they are now dried I've put them outside so they would dry and you notice the top part is unglazed and normally this would be fine I think I'd leave I'd leave them like this normally but like for the bowls, I'm going to leave them like this. For these, it's a you know me, and people are going to use them probably every day. So I think I'm going to put a front on these, like I would a tea bowl, just for kicks. And so to make the front, I'm going to add a little bit extra glaze on one side or the other. Maybe here. And so this is 
I don't have to trim the glaze away on this now because of the way I applied it before. I think I explained that in the previous part of the video, but what I'm going to do now is just create a little bit of a front. And I'm scraping this glaze off and I have a bucket here below to catch the powdered glaze because that's a waste if you just, you know, ash is expensive if you if you buy it and it's expensive if you make it either way anyway so it makes a little V like that and then I'm gonna take the sponge and not too carefully but just to make sure there are no big chunks left I'm gonna make sure that that iron glaze is off of that part right there and it's a bit stained and that's okay but there's no residual like thick thick glaze left there and so when I apply the glaze later with the uh, can't remember what it's called in English dang it the scoop whatever um, the ladle I'm gonna go around overlapping slightly over the brown, uh, the red glaze, the whatever this this iron glaze, and then when I get here, I'll adjust and and go here and let it flow down and cover that up, and that's how you do it. If you do it this way, this is just my way. There are probably a lot of different ways to do it, and this is the one that I use. Okay. Okay, I don't know how, how well you'll be able to see this, but I've got two buckets of rice ash, rice straw ash glaze. One that's a bit thinner that I use for the interior, because I don't want it running and pooling in the bottom. And then the regular thickness here that I'm going to use to go around. I'm going to turn to see if you can maybe see this. I'm overlapping the brown glaze. And then shake off the excess and if you get a little bit pooling on the top there that'll be extra a little accent in the front so that works I'll do one more hopefully maybe a little closer all right we'll try one more a little closer here it is the interior you notice how I'm agitating the glaze before every application because it settles that much. You can feel it starting to settle on the bottom after just like 10 or 15 seconds. Okay, that's it.